and uh, welcome to TK Services. Uh, so today I am going to talk to you about a very different topic, uh, and I am sure most of you are interested in this topic. It's the goods and services tax GST that has taken the industry by storm, I would say. And uh, the topic that I am going to talk uh, to you in detail about within GST is how GST has dealt with the cascading effect of taxes. Of course, this is under the larger purview of indirect taxes as a subject. This topic should help conceptually the people who are preparing for the CA intermediate and final examinations as well as the CS intermediate and final examinations as GST is a critical part of that curriculum. All right. So now what do I need to cover as a part of this topic? I am intending to cover what, what used to happen in the pre-GST era, what happens in the post-GST era, what do you mean by cascading effects of taxes, how GST has dealt with the cascading effects of taxes and who bears the final tax incidence. Okay, so before I move further, I'd like to give you a small example which will actually explain you all of these topics. So let's look at a hypothetical example. I have taken the case of a automobile engine manufacturer. This automobile engine manufacturer sources its raw materials from Orissa. That's the raw material source. So the state of Orissa is the source for the raw materials. This comes to the manufacturer who is situated in the state of Maharashtra. He manufactures the engine based on the raw material sourced. And he also adds the necessary value add before this engine moves to the wholesaler. The wholesaler then further passes, wholesaler who is based in Gujarat actually, passes on the assembled product to the retailer who is based out of West Bengal and the retailer then passes this on to the consumer who is also situated in West Bengal as for this particular example. Now, let's say the cost of the raw materials was 1 lakh rupees, 100,000 Indian rupees. Now, this particular person who has supplied or who is the vendor for the manufacturer has just supplied the basic raw materials for the manufacturer to assemble after he manufactures the necessary parts, the engine, which he again pushes outside for sale. All right. So the cost of the materials which he is going to send to the manufacturer is 100,000 rupees. He is obviously going to add a profit margin to it. For the sake of this example, I have taken a profit margin of 10%. You can see here 10% is the profit margin for the raw materials supplier and therefore on this total sale value, which is the raw material cost plus the profit margin, he has charged a CST, a central sales tax of 2% against the C form, mind you. And therefore, the total invoice value for the manufacturer in Maharashtra comes out to be 1,12,200, including taxes, which is CST. This obviously becomes the cost for the manufacturer in Maharashtra. Okay. Now the basic job, he's obviously got all the raw materials, but now he will use the raw materials. He will make the engine. He will assemble the engine. Let's say the total costs is about 28,800 rupees, which adds up to his total cost of raw materials plus the manufacturing cost of 1,41,000 rupees on which he adds his profit margin. I have taken a profit margin of 15%, which gives an assessable value of 1,62,150 rupees. Now, mind you, since he is a manufacturer, he was liable to pay excise duty on manufacture. Let's say the excise duty was 14%, along with 3% says the effective excise duty rate comes to 14.42%. So he adds the excise duty. So the total value including the excise duty is 185532 on which he charges a 2% CST central sales tax because now this engine will move to a different state in Gujarat to the wholesaler. So the CST will be applicable and the CST is 2% on the total of the accessible value plus excise duty which is 3710 leaving us with an invoice value that the manufacturer gives to the wholesaler for payment which is 189242.67 all right 
so it's quite clear therefore that for the wholesaler the invoice or the cost is 189 to 42.67 the wholesaler obviously does not have any manufacturing costs, but he still will add his profit margin. Let's say he has a profit margin of 8% on this cost, which works out to 15,139 rupees and 41 paise. And now this wholesaler in Gujarat will transfer or will send or dispatch this particular assembled engine to the retailer in West Bengal. And let's say the CST, therefore, again, CST will be applicable because this is an interstate sale moving from Gujarat to West Bengal. We have assumed a CST rate of 2% against the C form. So, therefore, the total is 4087.64, which is chargeable on this value 204382. On that, when we apply 2%, we get 4087.64, giving us the total invoice value that the wholesaler will send to the retailer for payment which is 208469.73 and this becomes the cost for the retailer. Therefore, the cost for the retailer is 208469.73. The retailer obviously does not have any manufacturing cost, but he will still have his profit margin. I have taken a 5% profit margin for the retailer, which comes out to 10, 423.49. I have applied this 5% on this total cost outlay so 208 plus 10 will give you 218893.21 on which mind you this time the retailer will charge VAT to the consumer because the consumer and retailer are both situated in the state of West Bengal therefore this is an intrastate sale attracting VAT value added tax I have charged a value added tax of 12.5 percent and therefore the total invoice value which if you add the cost plus the profit margin plus the VAT will come to 246254.86. So this, my dear friends, is the total cost to the consumer in the pre-GST era. That means this particular consumer will pay for, let's say he, he wants to buy this automobile engine, he has to pay 246254.86. Now let us try and break up this cost between cost profit margin and taxes. Now if you look here, the effective tax is 6741.96. Now how did I get this? All I'm going to do is I'm just going to add up all the costs, all the taxes. So CST, then here we have excise, again CST, CST here and the VAT here. If you look here, the total taxes are 6741.96. 0.96. So the effective taxes included in the final price of the consumer is 60,741 and 96 paise. And what is the cost therefore? The cost and the profit margin is basically added up like this. You have the cost and the profit margin of the raw material supplier, the manufacturing cost of the manufacturer, the profit margin of the manufacturer, the profit margin of the wholesaler and the profit margin of the retailer adding up to 185512.9 as you can see here so that is the dear friends the breakup of this 2462548.86 which has 60741 rupees and 96 paise as the effective taxes cst excise duty and vat and the cost plus margin of 185512.90 leaving the consumer with the effective tax rate of 32.74%. Now, how did I get this 32.74%? 32.74%, if you look here, is the, is the effective tax upon the total cost as a percentage, which comes out to be 32.74%. Now, this, dear friends, is a classic example of cascading effects of taxes. Now, what do you mean by cascading effect? The invoice of the raw material supplier has the CST, right? Now, this CST is included in the cost of the manufacturer because he is not getting any input tax credit for this cost. So, this becomes a cost. When he adds his manufacturing cost and profit margin on this total cost plus margin, which includes the CST, he is paying the excise duty. So, that means you have already paid excise duty on the CST which was paid earlier. 
Now on this total profit margin plus cost plus taxes, we have now adding excise duty and on this total value, we are paying 2% CST. So that means this CST is on indirectly being charged on the CST paid earlier plus the excise duty paid now. This way, the tax on tax, tax on tax compounded the misery for the consumer. That is why the cost to the consumer was very, very high and the effective tax rate by the consumer in the pre-GST era was supposed to be extremely high. Now, to be able to imbibe best practices, the Indian government also moved to the GST era and as per the GST, the main intent was to benefit the consumer to reduce the tax burden on the consumer. Now, how will you reduce the tax burden? The simplest answer to that is you have to remove and eliminate the cascading effect of taxes, which means there should not be any tax on tax, which will therefore reduce the tax burden on the consumer. And that was one of the major highlights of implementing GST. All right. So now let's take the same example, same case in the post GST era. And let's try and see how the flow works. Now, if you look at the raw material source, the cost remains the same 1 lakh on which he adds a profit margin of 10% makes it 1 lakh 10,000. Now this he will charge a GST of 12% assuming that this is a 12, it attracts 12% 12 GST. So the total invoice value will although be 1 lakh 23,200. Okay, so I am going to just make this the invoice value will be 1,23,200 but the cost to the manufacturer still will remain 1,10,000. Now why is that? This is because the cost, the taxes that he is going to pay, this 13,200 rupees is actually he can take credit of these taxes. So this does not remain his cost. Actually he is not incurring any cost at all. He is just that is the basic fundamental of indirect tax. He's going to collect the taxes and he's going to pay it back to the government. So this is not actually his cost. And he's going to take input tax credit for all the taxes that he has paid to the raw material supplier. And he will set this off against his final tax liability. All right. So that's why his although the invoice value is 1,23,200, his cost is 1,10,000. Now, what is going to be the manufacturing cost? The manufacturing cost remains at 28,800, which brings us to the total cost of 1,38,800. What is the profit margin? He still maintain the same profit margin, 15% brings 155,300. Again, you have GST of 12%. So the total invoice value now comes to 173,936, but the cost for the wholesaler in the in Gujarat is going to be 155,300 again because the payment of GST is not a cost since now GST has now brought about the concept of removal of cascading effect of taxes right so now this wholesaler in Gujarat will add his profit margin of 8% takes the total to 167724 and now applying 12% GST his total invoice value, which is going to charge the retailer, is going to be 187850.88. But this is not his cost. His cost remains at 167724 because he is going to get credit for all the input, ta all the taxes that he has paid to the wholesaler. All right. So we now move to the retailer. Retailer adds his profit margin of 5% and then GST of 12%. And the final invoice value to the consumer is 197 to 43.42. Okay. So now let's quickly find out why are we not considering the taxes as the cost. This particular box here is critical. This is going to answer all your queries. Okay. Very good. So let's start now with the raw material supplier. Now the raw material supplier you can see is collecting 13,200 rupees of GST from the manufacturer because his invoice value includes GST. So when the manufacturer pays for the invoice, he pays him 123,200 and therefore the GST is now recovered. So this money that he collects from the manufacturer, he pays to the government to the credit of the manufacturer and therefore the tax incidence 
on the raw material supply is nil. All he is going, doing is he is collecting the taxes on one hand from the manufacturer, paying it to the government on the other hand. So he, there is no tax which goes into his pocket and there is no cost involved and therefore we do not consider this payment of tax as a cost for the manufacturer. This stands to his credit. Whatever the manufacturer has paid to the raw material supplier stands to the credit and the manufacturer of the engine can claim input tax credit on the taxes that he has paid to the raw material supplier and set this off against his final tax liability. Now his final tax liability for the manufacturer VHC has charged the wholesaler in Gujarat is 18,636. This dear friends, this is the one. Now this is his final tax liability but he has already paid 13,200 to the raw material supplier. He will take credit of that and he will pay only the balance 5436 to the government and therefore the tax incidence on the manufacturer also is zero. So now let's move to the wholesaler in Gujarat. Mind you the wholesaler in Gujarat has already paid 18,636 because the invoice value that the manufacturer has raised on the in, on the wholesaler is 173936 which includes 18636 of GST. So when the wholesaler in Gujarat makes the payment to the manufacturer, he will pay 18636 of tax to the manufacturer. This payment will stand to his credit and he can stake the set off of this payment. He can offset this payment against the final tax liability. His final tax liability is 20,126.88 which he has charged the retailer as a part of his final invoice. So therefore, he is liable to pay 20,126.88 to the government of which he has already paid 18,636 to the manufacturer. So he just pays the differential 1490.88 and therefore the tax incidence on the wholesaler is also nil. We now come to the retailer. Retailer has paid 20,126.88 to the wholesaler, which he can take as input tax credit. Okay, now he is collecting a total tax of 21,133.22 from the consumer, which he is liable to pay to the government. So he is liable to pay 21,133.22, of which he has actually paid already 20,126.88. So he now pays just a differential of. 1006.34 to the government and you will see that the tax incidence on the retailer is also nil. What do you observe here ladies and gentlemen? You observe that the tax incidence on the raw material supplier was nil. The tax incidence on the manufacturer was nil. The tax incidence on the wholesaler was nil. The tax incidence on the retailer was nil then who bears the final tax incidence? The final tax incidence is borne by the consumer and that is the beauty of GST. And just GST was taken out with a lot of noble intent and I totally respect it. The idea is to benefit the end consumer. The end consumer therefore benefits. He is the only person who pays the, the taxes and it is in such a way that all taxes which have been paid earlier in the value chain are reflected to the credit of the intermediate party as input tax credit and only the incremental tax is paid. Therefore, if you see here, the total tax which has been deposited to the government is 13,200 plus 5436 plus 1490.88 plus 1006.34 which is 21133.22. This is the total tax that has been paid to the, con to the consumer and this matches with what the consumer has paid to the retailer. 21133.22. Therefore, this clearly proves that the entire tax burden has shifted to the consumer. But that does not harm the consumer. Rather, it benefits the consumer. How does it benefit? Because the cascading effect of taxes was eliminated through this beautiful scheme of input tax credit and only incremental value add taxes were paid and therefore the total tax incidence on the consumer was just 21,133 and look at the total cost. If you look at the total cost for the consumer it is 197,243 whereas in the pre-GST era it was 
254.86, which means on this particular engine, he has saved approximately 246 minus 197, which is 49,000. So ideally, the consumer has reduced his cost by 49 or rather the government has reduced the cost of the engine to this particular consumer by 49,000 rupees. Now that is a huge saving. Obviously the saving appears high here because of two or three factors. The volume of the item is high, the price is high. We have taken uh, probably a medium GST rate. All those factors are there but the essence is it definitely reduces the cost to the consumer and the main driving factor behind that is the cask removal of the cascading effect of taxes by the GST through the mechanism of input tax credit. Now, we have already seen let's uh, that the effective taxes is 21133.22. So what is the cost? The total, let's try and add up the total cost. The total cost to the consumer is 1,10,000 plus 28,800 plus 16,500 plus 12,424 and plus 8386 which is 176110.2 so if you add these two you get the final price that the consumer pays 197243.22 which is broken up into 21000 rupees of taxes and 176000 odd rupees for the cost and the effective tax rate for the consumer just works out to 12% so compare the pre gst and post gst era in the pre gst era the consumer was actually paying an effective tax rate of 32.74%, whereas in the post GST era, he is actually paying a 12% GST. And needless to mention and re emphasize again that the final cost to the consumer has also reduced. Therefore, now if you look at the coverage, I have covered by way of this particular presentation what used to happen in the pre GST era how the misery was compounded for the consumer in effect from uh, you know with respect to the taxes on taxes how did the gst handle the cascading effect of taxes and what was the post gst era and what is the concept of cascading effect removal of cascading effect through input tax credit and the final tax incidence i hope you enjoyed this video this is going to be up on my youtube channel concept canvas and I'm sure you'll watch it, you will enjoy it. By all means, provide your comments and feedback on my channel, Concept Canvas, and stay tuned for even more meaningful lectures around finance, commerce. Thank you very much and wish you very happy learning.